Well, I don't think any of the presidential candidates have been mailing me. I don't, have I gotten anything? Well, from anybody yet, I'm not sure. I might, things. I think some groups send me things. But uh, this is the first time I've got something from a candidate. Yeah, check it out. Barack Obama. Uh, yes, we can. Why are they writing to me? Have, I, ha, have they been reading my blog and noticing that my uh, I've been uh, getting a little favorable sometimes to Obama when I'm not needling him about Jeremiah Wright or something? Or, or what's most likely is they get the mail. They got the mailing list from Russ Feingold. I've been a Russ Feingold supporter since before he won his first uh, campaign for the Senate. I gave him money back in the 80s. His father was a professor at the University of Wisconsin Law School, so Russ Feingold started out um, by calling, just calling a lot of people who were at the law school, and I was one of the people he called. I had never given anyone money, but I finally gave him money because it was quite clear he was going to call me until I gave him money, so i got to get him to stop calling me. So anyway, he's been sending me um, email, I mean, uh, letters and whatever for all these years, so I think that's why I'm getting this from Barack Obama. So. Let's check it out. There's a special uh, letter from Barack Obama himself, and then also enclosed on a slightly different uh, paper, a special, uh, a special message from Senator Edwin, Edward M. Kennedy. Let's see what Obama has to say. Dear friend, <laughs> presumptuous of him, don't you think? When we began this improbable journey, a year ago, we, as if I, the friend, have been on the journey. It's a journey, you know, everything's a journey now. Few in Washington would have imagined that we'd be where we are today. So far, so good. The insiders, the pundits, the cynics, they said our sights were set too high. They said this country was too divided, too disillusioned to come together around a common purpose. Ah, he's running for president common purpose. Anyone running for president, is that a common purpose? Uh, but we're proving them wrong. Our mo movement for change is now one east and west, north and south, across the heartland of this country we love, through all 57 states. Uh, today, as we stand on the cusp of history, that's got to hurt. Sure. I'm asking you Cusp, you know, like a cuspid. Stand on that. I'm Altas is distracted by language and etymology. Imagine if a presidential can candidate got distracted by language and etymology like that. You'd think he was crazy, and you would not want him as president. He wouldn't be good at making decisions and taking things in the right portion. Um, I, you know, it's freezing cold. Why am I wearing it? It's, it's like 45 degrees outside here. It's really, um, well, I could show you. I could turn this around and just show you what I'm looking at here. See? It's, uh, it's dreary, it's cold, and, uh, I'm just sitting over here reading my mail from Barack Obama. Um, as we stand on the cusp of history, pompous oration, don't you think? As we stand on the cusp of it, all of us will stand on that cusp forever. She'll never get over it, the cusp of history. I'm asking you to become part of a new American majority, one that brings together Democrats and independents and gasp. Uh, blacks and whites, Latinos and Asians, red states and blue states, into a United States of America. Great, uh, catchy, catchy name for a country, isn't it? United States of America. Do you know that, um, the, really, we don't have a name for our country, it's just a description. Those states that we've got, the United States of America. Um, this is a new majority that will help reclaim the American dream, it's a dream shared by the factory workers I met in Youngstown, Ohio. You know, don't all speeches go like that? They start off, they, 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 now they go into the part where you can just sleep through it, where they start to just, like, list things. It's sort of Whitman-esque, right? It's sort of like a Walt Whitman poem. 
it's a dream shared by the factory workers I met in Youngstown, Ohio. Hard working people who have watched. Do they ever meet lazy bastards? Lazy bastards that are only looking at the clock, waiting for lunch hour, looking forward to retirement. Who have watched jobs disappear because of NAFTA. Anti NAFTA. The first issue he raises. I'm not on the same page. There are those who say we cannot bring about the change we seek, that we're offering the people of the nation false hope. And now it goes into boldface. But in the unlikely story that is America, there's never been anything false about hope. That's one of his quotes. There's never been anything false about hope. I remember that from the Will I Am song. Never been anything false about hope. False hopes. There's no such thing. For when we have faced down it, impossible odds, when we've been told we're not ready or that we shouldn't try, generations of Americans have responded with a simple creed that sums up the spirit of a people, yes, we can. You know, he just talked about Iraq, and wasn't he the one that was saying that we can't and that we still can't? Why doesn't he say, yes, we can, about the mission in Iraq and success in Iraq. Obviously, he thinks we can't do that. So isn't the current administration experiencing a false hope? But there's never been anything false about hope. And we're the unlikely story of Americans who um, uh, face down impossible odds. And yet he's the one that's saying give up in Iraq. I don't understand. This hope thing, it comes and goes. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed a trail toward freedom through the darkest of nights. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out from distant shores and pioneers who pushed westward against an unforgiving wilderness. Yes, we can. It was the call of workers who organized, women who reached for the ballot. Give me that ballot. A president who chose the moon as our new frontier, and a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. I get chills when I read that. Invoking Martin Luther King. Not the moon. I don't get chills thinking about the fact that we went to the moon, although, you know, it was really quite amazing. Um, but I was a cynical young hippie at the time, and we wouldn't even look at it on TV. Nixon wanted us to look at it, so we wouldn't look at it. Now, we know change isn't going to be easy. Not going to happen overnight. We're going to have to work for it and fight for it. But if you're willing to do that, then I urge you to consider a contribution of 50, 100, 250, or even more. The change we seek is still months and miles away. I need your help to get there. Please join our movement with a generous contribution to Obama for America. I've taken a position of cruel neutrality. I'm not giving anybody money. Yeah, I save money with my neutrality position. Let's see what Senator Ed, we call him Teddy, has to say. Dear Obama for America supporter, Again, with the presumptuousness. I love this country. I, don't, I can't do a Teddy Kennedy accent. I love this country. I believe in the bright light of hope and possibility. I always have, even in the darkest hours. Hmm, I can think of some of your darkest hours, Teddy. And, uh, and that's the whole thing. So, thanks for the mail, Barack Obama. Thanks for having your hope that I might give you some money, but I'm not going to give you any money. I might give you some favorable blogging in amongst the unfavorable and other cruel neutralities of blogging. And, uh, you know, 